Sabbath, dear friends. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Very good to see you. Thank you for your support, uh, for your hunger for the truth of God when it comes to health. I'm very grateful for your time. I'm very grateful for feedbacks that I'm getting. And uh, it's a blessing to me, first of all. So thank you. As we start our study, we'll continue uh, to study the laws of health. Today, I'd like to introduce you to the law of trust in divine power. The law number eight. We studied already all seven, right? And uh, much wisdom, much correction, much reproof we found in these laws. And the law of trust in divine power might be the very key to health that you and I are missing. My, my, can it be? Might it be? Before we'll start, I'd like to say a prayer. If you'd like, please bow, da bow down your heads. Oh, dear Heavenly Fathers, we come before you. We thank you so much again and again for your day of rest when we can stop and uh, look inside of us and see, are we still connected to you? Where is our faith? Help us to understand what the Spirit of the Word says for this particular subject, the trust in divine power. I pray that your Holy Spirit will be present. Give me mouth and the wisdom to speak to your people for your name's sake, for your glory, and open the hearts and minds, enlighten our understanding. For we praise you and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Do you believe, really believe we live in the last days of this earth's history? Yes. If we do believe, then we have to make some changes. Changes we're making in our lifestyles, in our health, our habits, preparations, everything matters at such a time as this. In the book of Ministry of Healing, we read, we are living in the midst of epidemic of crime at which thoughtful, God-fearing men everywhere stands aghast. The corruption that prevails, it is beyond the power of the human pen to describe. Every day brings fresh revelations of political strife, bribery, and fraud. Every day brings its heart-seeking record of violence and lawlessness, of indifference to human suffering, of brutal fiendish destruction of human life. Every day testifies to the increase of insanity, murder, and suicide. Who can doubt that satanic agencies are at work among men with increasing activity to distract and corrupt the mind and defile and destroy the body? It was written in the 1800s. How much more today? This sounds Today's message for our day. We know that satanic agencies are at work among men and against the mind and the body. We studied it throughout our presentations. I'd like to ask, why the body? Why the body? If the battle is for our mind, then why Satan tries to destroy the body? Because without the body, the mind doesn't work. You've got to have a way to support your head. <laughs> because there is an intimate relation between the mind and the body. And in order to reach a high standard of moral and intellectual attainment that God requests, in order to, for us to make it to heaven, the laws that control our physical being must be heeded. You see, when we come to the laws of health that control our physical being, we need to understand there are laws. God calls them laws. 
and for every law there is a fixed penalty. Do you believe it? Yes. There is a tendency to minimize the laws of health and put it as a suggestion, as something that is a principle of a lifestyle that can be adopted or not adopted, that it's not salvational issue. But the spirit of prophecy tells us while we cannot be saved through the health reform, we can be lost without it. Trust in divine power. What is it? What does it mean, trust in divine power? What does it mean to you? Well, trust in God for his leading and guidance. Okay. So divine power divine power trust in God in his divine power is trust in God Anna says any other thoughts it is impossible for us to reach the standards God wants us to reach mm -hmm. without God actually doing it for us and through us and in us so it's a power it's the power right the very power he provides for you and I to keep those laws that he put before us. Right. In Corinthians 6.20 we read, Glorify God in your body and in your spirit. So God cares for the body and the spirit. He gave the moral laws and he gave the laws for physical body. Right? It makes sense. Right? I, I wanted you to finish it. Mm -hmm. It's so important. Yes. It says, which are gods. Which are gods. So and we don't belong to ourselves. Yes. Correct. We have an order. Correct. Mm -hmm. Because God made this machinery, he calls it, right? The body. And he made this body at the beginning with the mind and with the brain and the conscience. And he breathed into this body his power his spirit man became a living soul we talked about it right so divine power is the source of salvation and transformation that can make any person a child of god the divine power tells us that we are his you know, in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 2 and 4, and uh, I believe I have it, but I will just say you, tell you, uh, it says this, that through the knowledge of God and through the knowledge of Christ, according to His divine power, He has given us all things, all things that pertain to life and godliness. If those gifts are given to us, all is given to us, then to minimize the loss of health or moral standard law, the standard of his moral qualities, right? We will be judged by them. We'll have no excuse because God will point according to my power, according as his divine power he gave us all that pertains to life and godliness there would be no excuse we are very close to the time when we'll stand before the judgment seat in the spirit of prophecy education the book of Educa education uh, 253 we read what is trust in god means faith is trust in god your faith is trust in God. You know, many uh, people say this. Okay, the belief in Jesus is those firm beliefs that make your faith, that leads you to act. So you believe in Jesus, then you develop faith, you're given the measure of faith, and then you act accordingly. Faith without works is dead. So it's not enough just believe in Jesus. She says faith is trust in God. Believing that he loves us and knows best what is for our good. And I put on the side the next words that she says. Look how beautifully she sounds. What does it mean to trust in God? Thus, instead of our own, it leads us to choose his way. In place of our ignorance, 
it accepts his wisdom. In place of our weakness, his strength. In place of our sinfulness, his righteousness. Our lives, ourselves, are already his. Faith acknowledges his ownership and accepts its blessings. Truth, uprightness, purity have been pointed out as secrets of life's success. It is faith that puts us in possession of this principle. So what she says, that faith will make you act to establish the principles God put before you. Health or moral. If you have no faith, you have no act. Without faith, you cannot please God. Yes? I've got a question on that. Is there a difference between having faith in God and having faith in Him working in us? Meaning Him having the power to change us. Is, is there a difference? There is a big difference because even Satan believes in God. But God expects you and I to cooperate. God will do his part if we do our part. So therefore, God gives you a measure of faith. What you do with this will result on your salvation. Work out your own salvation is a very good thing to hit on. Because you see many people outside of his DA have a doctrine. You just have to believe in Jesus. He did everything for us. There is nothing you can do. But we forgot that we justified at the cross. We are new just like we never sinned when we invite Jesus in our heart. Sinful as we are, he accepts us. He cleans us. But what happens next? We are told that we will be judged and justified by the law. We will be justified by the law. So between justification at the cross and justification final, there is a sanctification. And many people missing this point. The sanctification takes a lifetime, we know. What kind of faith you have? Dead works or you act on it, right? So divine power, we said, as a source of salvation and transformation, transformation, right? And so when we talk about the concept of trusting in divine power for the health and for the mind, it is a foundational, uh, uh, foundational aspect um, of faith of, in Christianity. We, are, we know that God expects us to cooperate, to obey. If you're obedient, you shall eat good of the land. You shall have heaven, right? In Proverbs 3, 5 through 8, we read, we know this very well, this verse, but I want us to break it down. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord, depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Let's break it down. Let's explore this concept. There are commands in this verse. There are commands, there are not suggestions. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. You cannot walk half-heartedly. The full reliance on God does not accept a partial, con partial service. Lean not unto thine own understanding. Do not rely on your intellect. Do not rely on your perspective, on your view of things. In all thy ways acknowledge him. 
Whatever good you do, it is him because he said there is nothing good in you. There is nothing good in me. Nothing. Not even one is good. So we have to acknowledge him. Be not wise in thy own eyes. You see this wisdom, this wisdom, wisdom of the world prevents people from coming to the Lord and being sanctified. You always put your imagination, you put your excuses, right? Not to do. And you creating your own truth, which is not absolute truth of God. My truth is not your truth. What speaks to me not speaks to me, to you, right? And so on. But the Lord commands, be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord. You know, many people say fear of the Lord means show reverence, show respect. There are two verses in the Bible that say show reverence and fear the Lord. It's still a dif there is a difference because God, he, what he says, he means it. He means it. And if he says, I cannot let you go on, he means it. If he says that you will be lost, he means it. Depart from evil. Depart from everything that is wicked. And we given when we apply to the health reform, what we uh, have, the law of temperance. Despise everything that is hurtful and use in moderation everything that is healthful. Depart from evil. Do not defile your body. Do not destroy your body because there is a demon of self-destruction. The Bible talks about it. So these commands follow by the promise. If you keep these commands, there is a promise attached. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. How many of us looking at the law of proper diet, let's say? He said, but you know, it's okay. I survived till now, right? And we're trying to find these excuses. Deuteronomy 6, 1, 2. These are the commandments. You know, Jesus said in John 15, 14, he said, ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. So it means if you want to be his friend, it's not just the law, the Ten Commandments. What's our, whatsoever I command you. If Jesus made us, then he made the laws that govern our being. Do you agree? Do you agree? Okay, if he made the laws that govern our being, and then everything that we are put in, against the law, we violate the law, we'll have the penalty, then we have sicknesses, diseases come upon us, and then we cry out, Lord, heal me. When the light is exposed to us, will he heal us? The Bible says no. If God will heal us in this state of this conscious state, I got healed, I can go back to my hurtful habits, what will happen? Worse. Worse. Oh, and God will be found a liar. He doesn't do this. Cooperation. So these are the commandments, the statutes, the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that you might do them in the land where you go to possess. In the land where you go to possess, you develop your character by keeping the laws of health also because the land where you go to possess, that kind of character is required. The full obedience, not 99.9%. It says, be you glorious without a spot, a wrinkle, a blemish. And blemish may, many times comes to the body, health. Many inherited uh, diseases from parents. 
but we read in the spirit of prophecy we still have to do we still have to do our very best our very best we still have to do to overcome to our best abilities that you might fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments all the days of thy life and that thy days may, may be prolonged. And we read in manuscripts uh, the commentary for this verse. It says, in this scripture we are taught that obedience to God's requirements brings the obedient under the laws that control the physical being. So why are we trying to minimize the laws and try to say it's suggestions? No, 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 there are, there are laws. There is a law of proper diet. There is a law of use, intelligent use of water. There is a law of sunlight. There is a law of air. Because to every law, God's health law attach something. To the uh, law of air attach the specific air that God calculated as food for our lungs. And the law of proper diet keeps our body in a health condition because that's what we made from, right? Right? Health, life, and happiness are the result of obedience to physical laws governing our bodies. If our will and way are in accordance with God's will and way, if we do the pleasure of our Creator, He will keep the human organism in Good, good condition and restore the moral, mental, and physical powers in order that he may work through us to his glory. Why he's healing us? So we can, he can use us for his glory. And therefore, if he cannot use us for his glory, we violate moral laws. That's why she says the transgression of moral, uh, the, the transgression of uh, health laws is transgression of moral laws. Because we're not able to love our neighbor and not using our gifts that God gave us. To, today's uh, sermon was, uh, right? The gift, we have to use it. That's how we show love to our neighbor. Constantly, she says, look, constantly he's restoring power, divine power. We're talking about the law of trust in divine power. Constantly he's restoring power is manifested in our bodies. If we cooperate with him in this work, health and happiness, peace and usefulness are the sure results. Very, very important, right? Very, very important. And then we read this. Health is an inestimable blessing and one which is more closely related to conscience and religion that many realize it has a great deal to do with one capability. So let's talk about conscience. How conscience and health laws relate to each other? Health and conscience, how does it relate to each other? I know Venice uh, had uh, a question about conscience prior. Venice, how health and conscience relate to each other? Last time I had uh, with Vinny's conversation, I believe, about it, and so I, I, I just was led to put it out today. So tell me how health and conscience and your religion may relate to each other. Your conscience is that which is making you aware of something being right or wrong. It helps you to uh, form, formulate decisions. Correct. It, it uh, helps you to make informed choices. Correct. And to seek out knowledge so you can. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you, Venice. Any other um, thoughts about conscience? So if we're talking about conscience and health and they have this connection, close connection. Yes. Yes, Jerry. Um, I would say it's like being alert. So the conscience makes you alert, being alert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's how it's connected to health. Because if you are not in good health, you will, be, you will not be alert. Okay. So with that said, tell me, have we have to follow our conscience always? It's based on your relationship. Again, it's based on what you already know. 
um, because the conscience helps you to weigh good and bad, negative and positive. Wonderful. So you have to have some sort of baseline to look from. So we truly have in the Bible described our conscience as good conscience and having a bad conscience. A conscience weak, defiled, and good conscience. So we, how do I know if it's a good conscience or it's defiled conscience? That's what I believe. That's what I said. I'm not, you know how many people are saying? It was not brought to my conscience. Therefore, I can disobey the law. When the, law, the conscience convict me, that's where I will obey and switch, right? Is it something the biblical this way? We read in mind, character, and personality. But one says, my conscience does not condemn me in not keeping the commandments of God. But in the word of God, we read that there are good and bad consciences. And the fact that your conscience does not condemn you in not keeping the law of God does not prove that you are uncondemned in his sight. Mm -mm, we cannot rely on our conscience. We need to know if we have a good conscience, how to understand. All need to become acquainted with their physical structure and the laws that control natural life. He who remains in willing ignorance of the laws of physical being and all who validate them through ignorance, these people are sinning against God. Last time I read my Bible, it says, no one sinner will come to heaven. These are very serious warnings. Very, 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 very serious. Will we trust God and in His divine power that He will give us help and power to keep God's health laws, to keep His moral laws? You see, it's the law of trust and divine power. Paul said, examine yourself if you have, if you're walking in faith. And then we read, when I come, Jesus said, will I find faith? Uh, yes, Jerry. Uh, the conscience is linked to the, to the work of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So if you keep on rejecting the Holy Spirit promptings, mm -hmm. and then now your conscience will be like, it's like a, like a watch that is not um, attuned. Mm -hmm. So that's how I say it, because God put the conscience in you like a, like a, a compass mm -hmm. to make you uh, see that when you go right, or when you do wrong. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit works through your conscience to indicate to you the right way to follow. Mm -hmm. But now you decide mm -hmm. to follow or not mm -hmm. God's voice, to hear God's voice or to follow His way. And that's, that's the danger. You become damaged. Correct. But God put the conscience like it's like clear, good. 100% good in you. But so. through your choices, through rebellion, that's when you damage your conscience. Correct. So, with that said, we understand that when God made a man, He put into him already this conscience, the basic knowledge of good and evil are there. And He gave a man a free will. And just like Jerry said, if we evaluate our conscience not knowing that this is good, right? This is good, but I know that it is good, but I do wrong. I commit sin. Therefore, we have to compare if our conscience is according to the word. There is no other way to know if you're right or wrong. There is no other way. And if we do not study, if we do not meditate on the word of God, spirit of prophecy unfolds the Bible, right? We're in danger to let our conscience to be deceived. What is conscience? Conscience is a judgment of reason, right? 
So it's a judgment of reason by which we determine good and or bad, wrong and right. And so she says, that we continue, all should place themselves in the best position in relation to life and health. Our habit should be brought under the control of a mind that, it, it, that is itself under the control of God. That's where you have a good conscience, right? I put this letter for, um, for number four, where she says, the idea is entertained by many, but how many? By many. <laughs> that a man may practice anything that he conscientiously believes to be right. But the question is, has the man a well-instructed good conscience or it is based and where, where, by, by his uh, preconceived opinions. Mm -hmm. Conscience is not to take the place of thus says the Lord. Mm -hmm. If the Lord says, this is your diet I gave you in Genesis and we live in the autonomy day and, the, and our diet should be as Daniel's diet and you disbelieve, you choose your way. Your conscience will deceive you because you disobey. You know what is right, but you do wrong. And all these excuses, Jesus ate fish, Jesus ate meat. Jesus never ate fish or meat on the atonement day. Mm -mm, never. He needed a clearer conscience. Jesus never made a diet for a man in Leviticus. He made it in Genesis. And God restores us back into Eden. Conscience is not to take the place of thus says the Lord. Consciences do not all harmonize and are not all inspired alike. Some consciences are dead, seared as with a hot iron. Man may be conscious, consciously wrong as well as consciously right. What happened to Paul? His conscience proved him. I am right. And he were, was persecuting Christians killing them. Mm -hmm. So it is a danger not to compare it with the word of God. Your conscience, eating dairy or eating cakes, continue to eat fish, continue to eat meat, increasing it, is a false conscience because it is not according to the word of God. 1 Timothy 1.9, holding faith and good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made a shipwreck. How many of us on this ship? Titus 1.15, unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. So when we disregard the laws of health, make sure you understand God considers it as disobedience and disbelief. Unbelief left Jews, many Jews in the wilderness. They never made it to heaven. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. Timothy 4.2, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Stiff necked. What happened to those people? They cannot even repent anymore. The conscience is not there. The Holy Spirit cannot knock through the seared with the hot iron conscience. And then we read this. Take your conscience to the word of God and see if your life and character are in accordance with the standard of righteousness which God has there revealed. You can then determine whether or not you have an intelligent face and what manner of conscience is yours. The conscience of man cannot be trusted unless it is under the influence of divine grace, divine power. Trust in divine power. Satan takes advantage of an un, un an enlightening conscience and thereby leads men into all manner of delusions because they have not made the word of God their counselor. Many have invented a gospel of their own in the same manner as they have substituted a law of their own 
for God's law. How many, I'm interested, how many substituted the laws of health for themselves for such a time as this? I drink what I want. I eat what I want. I go to sleep when I can, when I want. If I don't exercise, that's fine. I do what I want. Therefore, we substitute a law of our own for God's law. Dangerous thing. Think about it. It's a very dangerous thing. If there had existed no Satan, she says, to tempt, this special instruction, and she talks about health laws and all these instructions, right? Even God's laws would not have been needed. But unless the people had something to guide them, they would surely be led astray by the specious devising of the enemy, of all righteousness. Our, own sa our only safety is to be found in hearkening with all diligence to the word of the Lord, to obey. So look, take a look what it says. The health laws, we would not need it. Our conscience would con convict us. But because we're influenced by Satan, we need the guidance. So the health laws are given as a love letter or as a burden. What are these health laws? A burden or a love letter from Christ? A love letter. Okay, if it's a love letter, then why we reject love? I bring it often this psalm but we need to get further deeper into this psalm to break it down psalm 94 20 21 shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee which frames mischief by a law mischief frames devises evil by law we said right they gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous together the antichrist the son of perdition the fallen angels the man who fallen fall, right? Do these people, these angels, Satan himself, the Antichrist, they come together against the soul, against the mind and the body. And what is the throne of iniquity? What is iniquity? Tell me. What is iniquity? According to the Bible, what is iniquity? Okay. Any other thoughts? Sin. Okay. What kind of sin? Anything that goes against the law of God. Do we know that the Bible categorized three? Do we know that the Bible categorized three things when it comes to sin? Transgression, iniquity, and sin committed in ignorance. So iniquity and transgression often put together. David prayed. According to thy loving kindness, according to thy multitude tender mercies, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from all iniquity and cleanse me from all sin. On the atonement day in Leviticus, we read, when people were coming to the temple to confess their sins, they have to uh, uh, confess their transgressions, iniquity, and sin. So what is iniquity? It's a lifestyle of sin. Okay, well, we're given the verse in the Bible so we don't have to guess, right? It's found in Isaiah 59, 12. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us, for our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. So iniquity is a known sin. You see, outside Gentiles might not know God and they transgress the law. They have the law, they have not the law, we transgress the law. But iniquity, we know it. We know it is right, but we do wrong. We choose to do wrong. Iniquity is a known sin. And how do I know what sin is? I had not known sins but by the law. So now, let's take a look deeper. 
I had not known sin but by the law. Does Satan want you to know the law? No. Okay. Iniquity is a known sin. The throne of iniquity established in the known sin. He devises evil by the law. He has moral law, he has health laws, he has Levitical law that pertain to relationship between sisters and brothers. He looks at them and he devises evil by law. How? By legislating these laws that will bring harm, that will become a trap to us, to us right? And they gather themselves together. Look at this. They come together. They gather themselves together. You know, Republicans, Democrats. <laughs> they sit over one table, Daniel eleven twenty seven 27 tells us. They shall speak lies at one table. Did you see Trump speaking to the Pope? Did you see Biden speaking to Paul? So they come together. They sit over one table. And they devise evil by a law. What laws do they legislate? Just an example. 24 states, two territories, and the District of Columbia have legalized marijuana for adult recreational use. These new laws permit individuals to home grow marijuana. So legalize. The evil one devises evil by a law. He brings legislation into a place where you can use it for recreational, recreational use. What is recreational use? Tell me. <laughs> Casual, fun, Okay. 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 Recreational drug use is the use of one or more psycho psychoactive drugs to induce an altered state of your conscience. The bottle is for your mind, but what you put in your body affects your conscience and therefore you can lose. Do you understand how close we are to the Lord? How can we allow to have a defiled conscience? And a defiled conscience comes not just from what you believe, but what you eat, what you drink. When you sleep, if you exercise, because the life is in the blood. And if the blood <laughs> not circulating, not circulating, you're not bringing enough oxygen, you're not bringing enough nutrients to your organs. You cannot possibly be healthy. Either for pleasure, for some other casual purpose or pastime. Isn't it something that we know is so harmful, brought so much tears to mothers and fathers, children on drugs? The throne of iniquity devises evil by a law. They protect their evil by a law. Recreational drugs are commonly divided into three categories. Depressants, drugs that induce a feeling or relaxation and calmness. Stimulants, drugs that induce a sense of energy and alertness. And hallucinations. Halluc yes, drugs that induce perspective perceptual distortion such is such as hallucination. hallucination is it what something satan is trying to do for your mind for the mind of our children let's take a look common recreational legalized drugs what they include according to the wikipedia there are source from the government, 
governments of in US and so on, right? Let's see. Common recreational legalized drugs include caffeine. Do you know that caffeine, besides that we talk about that uh, to replace it, uh, we need five uh, glasses of water for one cup of caffeine. It reduces access of oxygen to your brain for 40%, right away. 40% less oxygen in your brain. Coffee? Caffeine. Yes, caffeine. In tea, coffee, tea, soft drinks with caffeine. Chocolate, cocoa. Yes, chocolate and coke. It's forbidden because it stimulates your mind. More than that, more than that, it has a very bad thing in it, chemical, that affects you. You cannot. It's forbidden by the... It's alcohol, commonly found in beer, wine, cocktails, distilled spirits, Nicotine commonly found in tobacco, tobacco-based products, and electronic cigarettes, cannabis, and hashish, most cannabis, cannabis right? Okay, oh, oh, let me speak right. And hashish, hashish right? It's, hashish is cannabis. Most of medicine no, it's has stimulative things in it, and they become addictive. You become addictive as a to drug. <laughs> Long time ago, we talk about the chocolate and cocoa, what it does to our children. It's very bad. Do you know who blessed coffee and how it started? Columbus brought it and how it started cocoa? The Pope at that time, he said, he blessed it and he said, the devil's drink. Let it bless. What? Yes. This is all against your mind. And the knowledge leads us, our people to destruction. In 1958, 1958, we're talking about a long time ago. The Food Additive Amendment to the 1938 Federal Food, Drug and Cosmetics Act was signed into a law providing new authority to the Food and Drug Administration to ensure the safety of chemicals added to the food supply. Is there a safety in chemicals in food? But the throne of iniquity devises evil by a law. Would, it be, would you be surprised if I would tell you that 99% of food we eat today, if it's processed, it has chemicals in it? Yes. 99%. Thousands. Thousands, I'm talking about thousands of chemicals are allowed for use in food by law. Some bad chemicals. There are top 12, right? Some bad chemicals are allowed to be in food without the manufacturer to expose that it is there. Because safety it's okay so you eat you don't even know what you eat many times legalized chemicals let me just read you these chemicals that you can find in milk pastry cakes bread hawaiian bread all of it uh-huh <laughs> Titanium dioxide, genotoxicity affects, how it affects your body? Genotoxicity, potential immunotoxicity and neurotoxicity damage to DNA. And it's recommended by the public affairs, avoid titanium dioxide 
all titanium dioxide all together. Red dye number three, risk to brain development in children, behavioral difficulties, increased risk of cancer. Red dye number 40, risk to brain development in children, behavioral uh, difficulties, many contain carcinogenic containment. Cont content, con contaminants. Contaminants. Yellow dye number five, risk to brain development in children, also behavioral difficulties, genotoxicity may contain carcinogenic contaminants again and again, again and again, right? Yes. And if you go, risk to brain to development in children, but we're giving them this. Do you know that we're giving these crackers? We're giving all this po potatoes, chips? Goldfish, all of it has it. cereal, all of it has these chemicals. We have a practice in my country that we really like, right? It's called Cricks. So I saw it here in the Fiesta and I was buying it. And my sister, I was telling her, my blood pressure lately, I've noticed it doesn't, because I'm, I'm not eating bread all the mm -hmm. time, you know. So I eat some crackers, I'll take mm -hmm. four or five crackers and stuff. And she was telling me that her friend was eating that and ended up with cardiac problems, and so I ended up. Correct. I said, what are you eating? And she said, well, I eat these crackers. And he said, the crackers, they put lard in the crackers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fat is good fat, yes. and that's why you have fresh. And not just fat, but chemicals also yeah, are right there. Right, right, right. And the girl's heart was really bad for her tissue. Wow, it's very serious. But it's very serious and it's real. It was really frightening. I, I stopped using it. Yes, using it, but yes. Is, you really don't know what you're eating? No. You know, when we talk about bread, Hawaiian bread, looks white looks beautiful tastes good right never get bad for month never get bad there is no life in need but chemicals that what do to your body look at this look at this bha increased risk of cancer hormone disruption and just call some a potassium bromate Increased risk of cancer, BVO, harm to the nervous system, the reproductive system, thyroid hormone function. And all these chemicals lead you to diabetes, to heart attacks and all this stuff because the body cannot use it. A safety evaluation by the European Food Safety Authority found the evidence suggests that when humans ingest food grade titanium dioxide, for example, small particles of tit titanium dioxide or nanoparticles can potentially accumulate in human body over time and cause genetic damage. You're talking about genetic damage, DNA. It means that replication of a cell goes with the arrow and you will have a different DNA this time, modified. And modified DNA leads you to diseases and if you continue to do it, then you have chronic diseases. In tone, it's very threatening, so we have to pay attention and we have to share this information. It's not for our own, we have to share. The health reform is the hand to open the door to the third angel message. Do we use it? Do we use the hand or we trying to do with the head to open the door or not trying at all? Intuon damage to DNA is one way that chemicals can cause cancer and other health problems. Accumulation of titanium dioxide, nanoparticles in the body may also damage the immune and nervous system again and again. Do you understand how important to keep the law of proper diet in our time? When is the health um, reform was given? 
in 1963, June 22nd, I believe, right? 1963. At the very important time. That's where the chemicals started to chocolate, coffee. You see? Everything. Green tea, everything. Whoa. Green tea that has caffeine is the worst. Try to read what it has, educate yourself what you're using. Where you can find, for example, titanium dioxide in products? Milk. Even organic milk has it because otherwise it will get spoiled. Coffee creamer, pastries, chocolates, cake decorations so chocolate bars salad dressings you know it's used because it gives the white uh, like the uh, color white appeal like appearance mm -hmm. looks better mm -hmm. for you to buy because satan uses the five senses mm -hmm. you see you taste you smell yes. mm -hmm. candy and sweets chocolate again chewing gum all this aspartam, all this aspartam that is added, all these chemicals, snacks, sauces, and even in vitamin supplements. Mm -hmm. Did we talk about? Yes. So we need to check what it has. Always buy plant-based. Always check ingredients. There has to be two ingredients really in supplement. What vitamin itself? And the capsule that is from plant-based something made. But if it's more, avoid. Almost 99% of food chemicals introduced in, since 2000 were green-lighted for use by food and chemicals companies rather than properly reviewed by the Food and Drug Administration. Who is behind Food and the drug administration, they sit over one table, understand? It doesn't matter. Many of these widely used chemicals are associated with major health harms because of these laws. The throne of iniquity devises evil by the law. Because of these laws, these substances end up in what we eat thanks to legal loophole that allows food to be classified as generally recognized as saved. Satan came to deceive, to kill and to destroy. Mm -hmm. What side are we are? What side are we are? Do you know we eat this br white bread, Hawaiian bread, and all such foods that are very full of chemical chemicals? Do you know that we place ourselves on the Satan's side, and then Satan is laughing at Jesus? We crucified him because we break the commandment of God, of a proper diet, the law. The law. It's the law of water, the law of air, the law. <laughs> When we will understand. Food and chemical companies have exploded this loophole for decades instead of FDA determining which food chemicals are safe to consume. Now what, guess what? Give me a second. What, what is now? The manufacturers decide if it's good for you or not. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Because there is a law that allows them to do so. The law. Because it's a law. You can't even sue them. It's a law. It's a law. You cannot sue them. So do you understand that the law of trust in divine power that he requires from you to keep the law, he provides the power for you to keep it. And if you, by your defiled conscience, did not come to the understanding of the law of proper diet because your taste is perverse and you cannot taste good food, then it will testify against thee on the judgment. Nobody forces. Do whatever. God gave you free will. God gave you free choice. But we read in the spirit of prophecy, your diseases will testify against thee. 
question. Yes, please. I'm saying, what are we going to eat? Number one, mm -hmm. we know the inner place where we can farm our own food. Mm -hmm. We have to depend on the store to mm -hmm. get food. It's not like in my country where we can plant our own food. What is the call? Go to the country. There is a call. Will you obey the call and go to the country or stay in the city suburbs? Where? I Listen, the money is coming digital. What happened? The money is coming digital. Digital. Right, you know, right? The presidential agenda already talks about the law, local in America, right? The Sunday law, right? It is real. Correct. Right? So now we come into the place where we are told that we will have such a chaos, such a trouble, time of trouble, like never before. The French Revolution is a promise. The history repeats itself. What Ecclesiastes tells us? The book of Ecclesiastes. What has been, that will be. And there is nothing new in the, under the sun. So the history will repeat itself, right? And we're talking about right and left. It does not matter. The potential civil war is there. If you at now, good times, don't know what to eat, cannot live without a hospital, I'm not talking about those who really need support, who really need support. God will provide if you pray. And if you now is not ready, then hear the call. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Mm -hmm. And I just put here a more potassium bromate that we can find in every bread we might buy still not BHA not in the flour, <laughs> you know what the flour we talk about it there is no such good flour except spelt icorn flour right a couple of more grains maybe rye bread rye flour the hybridized bread by itself, the DNA is disrupted, is by a law. The whole world, it's hybridized bread that affects your stomach, digestive uh, system, you have gluten intolerance and so on. Avoid. The call is to avoid. I'm just uh, showing you. So, uh, look at this, uh, we are buying all the time tortillas in order for them to be uh, sellable. Do yourself. Take time, do yourself. I came to the point in my life where I eat nothing but what I do. Look at this. Yogurt. Milk, everything. Right now they've created like vegan meat. If you read how much, how much chemicals are there, you would run. Vegan meat. Yes, vegan meat, vegan, vegan sausages, vegan cheese. But what's in there? Is it plant? plants? Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Acts 24 16 and herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense towards God and toward men let's read again and herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense towards God and towards men. Do you understand what it is? What he's talking about? Tell me. That whatever you do, you have to, the commandment Jesus gave, love for God and love for your fellow men. Amen. And you have to love, you have to love your neighbor as you love yourself. 
Amen. What you wouldn't like be done to you, you shouldn't allow it to be done to you. Amen. It's not okay to do it to you. Amen. It talks about the law, Vinis says. And it's an exercise. So it's constantly you're doing that constantly. Exercise. Developing your own conscience. Having clearer by exercising, by avoiding to transgress the law, to commit iniquity, known sin against God. When I know this is full of chemicals, I know I have to drink water. I know I have to exercise. I know that I have to have, what are the laws? Tell me, tell me, what are the laws? Right. Sunlight, sunlight, breathe air, but what if furniture will go bad? I don't want to open the window. I don't want to get the air in. Constantly breaking the law, committing iniquity. But Jesus said, many will come in my name, but I will tell them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who commit what? Iniquity, known sin, known sin. Depart from me, you who commit iniquity. Does it apply to health laws? Yes, yes. Absolutely applies to the health laws. So the Bible tells us, do not be self-deceived. Examine yourself if you're in the faith. When we do all that we can to preserve the health then we can ask God in faith to bless our efforts. Wow. There is a condition to everything. Mm -hmm. You know, the spirit of prophecy in the Bible is so in harmony. So in harmony. The spirit of prophecy in the Bible have promises and conditions to it attached. Because the spirit of prophecy, who gave it? The Lord. The Lord. Jesus is speaking to you. Amen. Why do you disregard? At such a time as this, can we afford to transgress laws? We have a... How, my, how many uh, months we have till November when things will change forever, never will be the same? How many months? One, one, one complete month. So, how much time do we have? Time is the biggest talent that is given to us. Time. Are we steward good? Good stewards of time or bad? I know I'm bad. I have to repent. But I know I have the law. The law that God put that he himself cannot validate. The law of trust, of divine power. That if I come in, repent, in repentance and I will confess my sins, and I will ask to change my bad, bad taste, taste bad, right? Taste that I will have not perverse taste, but the taste that he made from the beginning, because I will make my mind to check everything I eat from the scratch, vegetables, grains, good grains, not hybridized, and fruits, to my best ability to find organic, non-GMO, not just organic, organic GMO right now, you know, honey crisp, organic big apples, GMO. Find the best what you can do in your sphere. God is not telling you, go to another planet. And, and we should eat just to survive too, because some people they eat so much. Like Overeating, it's, correct. It's uh, um, expensive, but how often do you eat? So that, so if you eat normal, I will tell you, you will have no fat in you. The way the God put it, from the beginning, Ellen White said, Solomon had two meals a day, not overeating. Two meals a day. Then he married women. He mingled. He started to indulge in himself. He almost ended up where? As a fool. So if I come before the Lord and I truly repent, I fail again today, I fail tomorrow, but I know the righteous fell. 
seven times, but the Lord will lift him up because I determined, I committed, and he will test you, and then he will give you the power to overcome. When your yes be a yes and no be a no, but compromise is there when it comes to food, comes to health laws. Why? Because we don't take it seriously as we should. Yes. We started what we're supposed to eat. We started what we're supposed to What did you eat today at potluck? I believe, I believe that there was food in majority healthful. That's what you eat. You eat green leaves every day. Green leaves. Green, dark, leaf, leafy vegetables. You eat every day you have to put. Ten days. You know what's interesting? Ten days. Your bud, taste buds will change. New. You can train your taste. But do you want it? God will never force your conscience. Our conscience is defiled if we not do it according to the word of God. To have a clear and good conscience is to obey God's laws. Everything. Whatsoever I say to you, ye are my friend. Whatsoever I command you to do, you are my friend if you do whatsoever I command you. Right? Let us pray. Would dear Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we are so grateful for this truth. Truth for life, life eternal. I pray for the God even now that our consciences will not let us be at peace. That your Holy Spirit will come upon us and convict us of our sins, transgressions, iniquities, of righteousness and of overcoming judgment. I plead with you, Father God, have mercy. Have mercy, forgive. Forgive me, forgive your people. Forgive our loved ones, our children, our relatives. Forgive. Have mercy, O Lord. Help us to change. Help us to walk in thy ways. Help us to establish thy laws. Cause us to establish thy laws. Touch every heart. So we can praise you. Here on earth and there in heaven. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.